Hey everybody, we're going to look at just an example of using the IDAM protocol inside Logic. And one of the things I wanted to test was to see if this was all going to work in terms of timing between various tracks. So we have some split tracks between Logic and some that are on my iPad Pro. You can see here I've got three different instruments right now on the iPad Pro. And then I've got two instruments here inside Logic. One of them is the ES2 and then this one is just the drummer track. So not a super complicated session here. In fact, one of the things we can look at would be the IO buffer size. And you can see because of the smallness, I can get it down to 32 samples just using built-in headphone jack. So not even using any other hardware right now. That's important because we want to keep the buffer size down for when we're integrating all these external tracks to have the least amount of timing variance between them. So just keeping things tight and really in line. And that's because the app we're using on the iPad has its own buffer size. We want to keep everything as low because things are very close here, but they're not perfectly in sync. There is this little bit of latency that goes through and even if we're using plug-in latency compensation, it doesn't really help as much because that can't control what happens on the iPad. So here's what we have. I've got three tracks, and these are instrument tracks. Now you could, and I put this one up here, you could use one of these external MIDI tracks and send it out to the iPad through the iDAM format. However, the problem is, is that you can't use some of the coolest MIDI features such as the uh, MIDI effects. So we have to, if we want to use the MIDI effects, actually use an instrument channel and then load on it the external instrument plugin for the instrument. And then I have it set up to go to the iPad and I can split it out by channel, but I'm not using the input feature because they're all going to be mixed on the iPad and brought back in onto the computer so I have an audio track down here that's set to input to monitor so that way I can hear all of them down there. Let's just listen for one second. This is really just a very simple loop, nothing complicated about it. does show one of the more annoying things about this and that is if I solo out this audio track it looks like they're all muted up here but soloing tracks doesn't mute the MIDI on instrument tracks with the external instrument so for instance if I want to solo out this nave right here we wouldn't hear anything at all because it's actually muting the iPad so one thing we should do is actually come down here and solo safe that iPad but you'll still hear that all of three of these instruments are going out because you can't just simply solo one and have the other MIDI be muted. It's muting the input of the audio. So for now, until I really think of a better way, I'm just using the mute tool to mute things when I don't want to hear them. And I'm going to figure that out. I just haven't had time today to really think about it. So let's go through what's happening here on the iPad. I'm using this app. Uh, it's called AUM or AUM. And this is kind of like the all-in-one brain for this setup on the iPad. You can load various instruments. So we could come in here. I could do hardware input, audio, unit extension, interamp audio, audio bus source, a file player, or a mix bus. So here we have the audio unit extension ones. I've got iDensity, iSim, drum machine. We have the IVCS3. We have the Model 15. We have a Yamaha FM. These are most of the really cool ones that are working with audio unit right now. Not all of them, but many of them. But we can use any of these with interamp audio as well. And this works really well. So I've got examples of both of these here. This one is one of the audio units. Same with iSEM. But the Nave 
is actually an inner app audio. So it loads up separately and just sends the audio out and the MIDI can go to it as well. It's both way communication, but we can go back and forth. So these three now, I've got a little panning and I've got some level. We could add other effects if we want to. We can add effects in here, any kind of audio unit effects, as you can see, pretty awesome. So let's remove that empty slot. So the MIDI is coming out through the IDAM, which means I had to come in here, enable it in the audio devices in the audio MIDI setup, and then it shows up here as well for MIDI. The only other really tricky thing is that uh, you have to, in the, in the app on the iPad, set up the MIDI routing. You can see the host is going out to those three plugins, but there's no way to set the actual MIDI filter for the channel except out here where I can actually come down, turn off all the channels and just filter for specific channels. That way, inside Logic, I can come through on the each individual external and set the MIDI channel. So that way the MIDI is being sent just to the instrument you want. And then all the audio comes in on this track right here. Now, if I wanted to actually convert this to audio, one of the things I would do is set up a new audio track for each of these and then just record them one at a time into audio tracks. So check this out. Now, we could actually solo this one. And we have an audio version of that track from the iPad. So I could just render these all out like that if I wanted to. Let's, let's delete that for now. Okay, so this is an example then of using the iPad locked in with that. I don't hear any glitches, I don't hear really any time issues with this, but it's not exactly the best way to do a very specific test. You do a kick and a snare or a click and just have them both play in Logic and on the iPad. And when I did that with a kick and a snare, I don't have a setup right now, but when I did that, it was very, very close. It's almost just like a little flutter there, but it's very, very close and it's consistent, which means that we can uh, adjust for it if we need to. In cases like this with most of the instruments I'm using, a teeny bit of latency is not even a deal. Uh, but every once in a while there'll be something where you want to double something and you want it to be perfect, or if you're doing percussion you want it to be exactly perfect. Those are times when you may have to adjust a little bit. Okay, just showing you a little bit more of how this is working and how easy this is and how reliable it can be. You can see here with my CPU that it doesn't look like I have this many instruments on it. It's pretty low, and that's with a 32 sample uh, buffer size, so pretty efficient. Okay. I will see you all later.